Hey folks, Quill18 here, bringing you another Heroes of New Earth commentary. It's good to be back in the saddle. Actually, I'm not talking about the Han saddle, because I've been playing Han non-stop, but I mean the commentating saddle. Just been too busy with all the other games lately that I have not been not been commentating a whole lot of Han, and I do love the game. Here I am playing as Plague Rider once again, as I switch windows here. Um, I know I've done some videos with him before, but he remains one of my favorite heroes. And actually, before this game, I hadn't played him in quite some time. At least 10 games. I'm pretty sure he was on off my list of recently played games. And uh, one of my friends, Anime Hero, who I'm in here with a lot, suggested... I think I'm playing this on my own, though. Without It's not a pre-made. Yeah. Uh, reminded me of the fact that that really Plague Rider fits into virtually every single composition there is, and the big part of it is really just the the extinguish. Because I, I'd been complaining about the fact that um, I don't like to pay, play people without a hard CC, like a stun, for example. It's one of the reasons I love Andromeda and Polywog and uh, Witch Hunter, for example. Great, great stuns, often multiple stuns, and it, it just seems so excellent, and, and I'm, I shy away from people that don't have it. And I was saying, oh, you know, because I love Plague Rider so much, but he doesn't have that CC. Although he does have a slow in the queue. Um, but then I was, I was reminded that, no, he's actually pretty good, and I was like, yeah, all right. So I went in and played a game with him here to, uh, to get my kicks. So we do have a Nighthound taking the mid. At the top, we've got a Hammerstorm and a Rampage, which is kind of an possibly an odd comp. I mean, bottom of Thunderbringer. I think... I seem to recall... Uh, we may have had a discussion in voice chat about this. I think these two were kind of in a pre-made together. And it seemed to me it was kind of an odd composition. Like, I, I guess Hammerstorm can be kind of supportish. I don't know. It just seemed like they would almost do better if we'd broken up, like, the ranged and support. I I'm not sure. Oh, I meant to talk about what I was doing here. So first of all, in the middle, I start off in the middle and I eat a minion. And that, I find, it's probably pretty helpful to mid. When Mid is so sensitive. Look at this, level 2, level 1. That is a huge difference. And if this guy were a little bit more aggressive here, I think he really could have taken advantage of the fact that this guy is going to be denied that one minion at the start. And, and potentially you could have turned it into a bit of a snowball. Not really taking advantage of it there. But after I eat the creep, what I then try to do is get down here and place a ward before uh, this camp spawns. Now, this game, I'd noticed I hadn't actually made it there on time. Uh, and so after this game, I'd adjusted my path to get there on time. Because usually, if I just start bottom, I just go and drop the ward there. I believe this camp spawns at the 30-second mark on the clock. So that's very easy to do if you go straight bottom and you do that. Or if you start top and, and you do this camp here. Uh, <clears throat> but... Because I stayed to eat this minion, and because I didn't take the most optimal route to get there, I didn't get there on time to ward that first pull. Not that it appears that they're actually using the pull. Uh, so that may have been fine. And a part of me wonders that since I'm going to be eating creeps all the time, it may almost be overkill to also block that, that creep camp. But I, I kind of like to be as annoying as possible when I play. That's my goal. <laughs> so uh, it's all part of my cunning plan here. Let me just verify that everything's good over here. Awesome. Okay. So, um, what else, build-wise? One of the things, and I know I've talked about this before, I feel like Plague Rider is very... It's almost like he has two modes. Either your opponents are kind of meh, and they don't focus on you in team fights, and they like to clump up, and therefore I ult them, and they all die. And that's awesome! Or the opponents are great, and they know that they have to, if they're going to team fight, they sort of need to CC and or burst down Plague Rider before the, he can ult if possible. Or they've got to somehow eat the ult or split up enough that it doesn't bounce, all these sorts of things. And so your game will really depend on your ability to get those ultimates off. And your ability to get those ults off is highly dependent on the behavior of your opposition. However, I feel like I can skew the, um, the scales a little bit by taking a very defensive build, and I still like to build a Shaman's Headdress as quickly as possible. Ah. Um, because the Magic Armor really cuts down the amount of burst damage that people can apply to me, and I find that it, it just it sh shifts things over more into the favor of, I will live long enough to get my ult off. Uh, and that's pretty strong when I do. So, I still, yeah, I still tend to like that build a lot. Um, it also means starting off, 
I can start with the Trinket Restoration, which I think is very handy for me in the laning phase. There we go, there's the second ward. Great spot right here, by the way. It catches this rune spawn, and also catches everything coming this way if mid is coming for a gank. I love this spot so much as compared to placing a ward here, or here. Like, here's slightly better because it gives you more vision of the enemy side, but I feel like this is so incredibly strong. And you can see here, I'm actually pinging the map because one of the things I like to do, especially, I, I've just pulled back a little bit there. I feel as a, I'm more of a supporty person. Um, and then play can do a lot of damage, but he's not item dependent, so I can afford to run around, place the wards, leave the lane temporarily, although losing the XP sucks because the XP is actually kind of important on play. Um, but I can afford to watch the rune spawns right at the four minute mark, for example, and ping the spot. Unfortunately, I missed the two minute spawn this time uh, due to various activities, so a lot of my timing was kind of off, but I placed it just in time for the four minute mark. There's not much point in placing it largely before that mark because your, your ward is just going to tick down without actually catching any action. Uh, oh, that guy was baited me out very nicely with his shield. Although, really, I don't have any mana problems. So I'm a little bit willing to trade that. Like he does have the, uh, the Ring of the Teacher and a Mana Pot, so I guess that's why he felt comfortable doing that. But being able to eat these minions... Man, you play some Plague Rider, you get spoiled, and you miss that so much when you're playing as someone else. It is unbelievable. So our mid did pick up the Haste Rune, but he didn't actually do anything with it, which is too bad, because I feel like that would have been a good opportunity. And here, I don't think I'm going to be able to help my buddy. No, I did hit him with a Q once. But other than that, I was not able to intimidate them with my mighty auto attack, which is a damn shame. We got a kick vote coming up on Thunderbringer. Yeah, because he died once. That's obviously, you know, time to kick someone, herp or derp. Come on. There wasn't even any QQ going on in voice. It's just someone randomly starts a voice chat. Here's pause. I think I was, I was going to type and respond here. I'm not sure. Looks like the pause is going to come down. Seeing if I can get a little bit of XP. No, I can't. And retreat back to the tower here. Oh, the pause is going to kick in, and oh god, this is not good. Break a shield, but what a pause. Look at this positioning. <laughs> I have to stare at this in-game for a minute and freak out about the fact that I am almost certainly going to die. Skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead a little more. There we go. Like, what am I going to do? Rock in a hard place here. Oh, get the stun. I do try to run away a little bit, which is actually kind of foolish. I do apply some damage to a curse. And look look how low he gets. If I had stayed in tower range, if I had attacked him an extra one or two times, or maybe just once, or just stayed in tower range, he would have gone down. That was a terrible decision to run. You think with all the time I had to think in here, I would have not panicked and played a little bit more aggressively there. Oh, well. I like bottom feeding hard. Yes, we've we've died once each. Never mind the fact that one guy top has has died three times, but it's bottom that's feeding hard. Bunch of dickheads. Ah, that's the kind of stuff. Like yeah, and it's not going well. It's five and one. That is terrible. And we have no team cohesion. It's going to do a nice little move on the Monkey King here with me coming in. I don't know if they saw the teleport or not. Oh, he's getting caught by his own creeps and gets intercepted by Hammerstorm. Monkey King is definitely going to go down, which is very good. Again, the importance of middle just cannot be <clears throat> cannot be overstated. Um, just because of the, the current meta and people putting really important characters in mid to solo that, um, just one kill either way changes the entire course of the game it's really really important um and a lot of people are always like mid should be coming to gank top or bottom and the one thing is that mid does have the ability to choose whether he's going top or bottom he can look at the lanes and say oh top is vulnerable so i can go there whereas top and bottom only ever have the opportunity to gank mid really uh barring a teleportation stone however mid is alone <clears throat> and so him leaving middle lane means that he's giving the other guy free farm so unless you can guarantee a kill you're really not going to be in good shape leaving mid alone like that so really it should be top and bottom ganking mid as often as possible um, but it is harder because mid is such a narrow lane there's not a whole lot of room like really whoops really there's only this sort of space here that is not covered by towers. There's vision blockers on the ramp, so it turns into a big problem getting that gank off. Um, but if you can pull it off, it is just so, 
So key. Looks like Night Hound is going top for Rune. Picks up Illusion. And he might be able to turn that into something, but probably not so much. Almost better using it for a scout right now since everyone's missing, but the root the illusions oh they do get stealth too. And of course they apply extra auto damage. There oh 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 I'm thinking Chrono's gonna go down. Come on, shut down that Chrono, shut him down hard. Whoa! You do not have a whole lot of uh, hit point items. Although he survived longer than I expected. And Grave Digger should go down as well. This is a nice reversal. I even TP'd top even though it was completely unnecessary. Holy cow. So now we are 5-5. Five, five. Things are suddenly going a lot better. And we may be able to get a tower here. Looks like looks like we're maybe dispersing. Hammerstorm is taking off. I feel we could have applied a lot of damage to the tower. When you get a kill like that, two kills. Yep. There we go. Okay. Stay here. Put some damage down. We may not be able to kill it, but we'll be able to weaken it considerably. Oh, they're not responding at all. They're going for mid. And I, know, I could just see there was some pressure going on here. They're not responding. We can actually get this tower completely. Especially Rampage doing his thing where he slows down the enemy creeps. Wow, fantastic. Chrono just decides to show up. In fact, that was... We could have probably gone after him, but... That's okay. Take what we've got. Don't overcommit. We didn't even lose middle. Nice. So where am I? I'm picking up a TP. And wandering around doing nothing. Oh, I guess everyone else has left top, so I'm probably thinking, I guess I'll take this farm. I should have eaten one of the creeps. I should have denied this one. What am I doing? Am I shopping? I might be shopping. Is there anything in my stash? No. I don't know what I was doing here. Uh, oh, we got a charge coming in on Rampage onto the Monkey King. And again, the heart... Wow, that is a lot of burst damage. The harder we shut down someone like Monkey King, the better, because he is very carry-ish. Uh, he's going to be charged back. Thunderbringer is being kind of ballsy here. No, he's going to be forced back as well. I did play a game as Thunderbringer not too long ago. It was a lot of fun. Invisibility rune, which apparently I don't notice because it's invisible. Oh, maybe I'm too eager to get a kill in the middle here. Double shot. Random ult does bounce off minions and bounces back to him. Lovely. Uh, but they're still in this room. Yeah, I just, I wasn't looking at it at all, clearly. I was looking down here. A lot of times when I play, I'm not even looking at anything in this big screen. Whereas in StarCraft, I'm flawed all the time because I'm always paying attention here and I don't pay attention enough on the minimap. Uh, oh yeah, and someone got the courier killed at some point. Uh, in Han, I spent a lot of time looking at the minimap. If you ever connected to one of my games as a, as a spectator, you'd probably be incredibly bored because my view will be like, here... And I'll be like halfway across the map, and I'll be actually watching the action over here in the minimap, um, which is good. It's all part of, of map awareness. You see where the dots are. A lot of times you don't need to be looking at yourself, um, especially if you're not actively in the process of getting last hits. If you're traveling across the map, there's no reason your camera should be observing yourself. You're, you're not gaining any information whatsoever. Really, the only time you need to be looking at yourself is when there's health bars in play. Looks like we're going to get a nice attack here. Oh, from every angle. Ja got them jammed in completely. Gravedigger may actually manage an escape. Actually, Chrono, nice little leap away there. Gravedigger does go down, and Chronos may... Do we have a stun coming up here? Nope! Oh! Interrupted by line of sight loss. Oh, he is going to escape. That is a darn shame. Oh, you may have TP'd away. Nope. Or not TP'd away, but jumped away. Oh, that's not him. Meanwhile, at the bottom, we do have another loss from Mr. Electricity. And we may have entered a little bit of a lull once more. So let's look at me, since I am the most important person in this game. Excellent. Um, I'm surprised I don't have more items, actually. Especially with getting a few more assists. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I have been buying some awards, but not that many. What is my GPM at this point? 143. All right, so it's not stupendously high. Uh, and a big part of that, of course, is just because I'm not getting the uh, the creep kills. Eight and nine. That sucked. I should have gotten one of those. And so I, I definitely still need to do better with creep kills, especially when my laning partner is not like super duper last hit pro. 
And that's the thing, I like being with the super... Ugh, I didn't get that either. I like being with the super duper last hit pro because it takes all the pressure off of me. Oh, TP to mid. Drop a slow and a cursed, but I think I'm alone. That's some nice, some nice damage on him, but... Although there's some coming in from behind. I do have my ultimate up. I think we're going to be able to do something about this. Too bad about the illusions. And... Oh, really, really long range ultimate... Thank God, that was just at the very edge of what could be done, and it made huge, huge, huge results. Cursed is still very hard to kill. Very hard to kill. There we are, taken down. And the Monkey King dropped down as well. Really good. 7 to 11, if we take a look in spectator mode for a little bit, just to check the scores. How do I get my little thingamadool? This always happens. can't remember how to get the little display down here. Nope. Nope. Ah! Here we are. GPN. Oh, and actually, the ones at the top were, were plentiful for this. You can see, even though we're ahead in kills, it's... The gold is virtually, virtually identical. And... Oh, looks like our hero is gonna fall down here. Ooh, maybe not. The tower may actually save me here. Looks like it does, and thank you, Rampage, for being there as well. So yeah, it is astounding to me. We are, well, we're only three ahead right now, but the gold is neck and neck. And even, like, the, the main gold earners on our teams are neck and neck as well, which is usually, even if one team is ahead, if the other team's carry has considerably more GPM, that means a lot. So neck and neck, close as you can be. Let's go back to, uh, to the hero cam. Another close exit by Kronos. Kronos is another person it's important to try to shut down his farm because he can be a real pain in the ass later on. 161 GPM. Slowly, slowly building up, getting some punch daggers. And the order in which I build things varies a lot. Um, I think I've been trying to get the um, ooh, the uh, the ghost marchers a little quicker lately because it does help with the last hits to have the bigger auto attack damage and I don't believe that Rampage is going to make it out of that particular encounter although Nighthound is looking for the bloodied target. He's being pretty well defended and he's going to escape to the tower so I don't think Nighthound's going to be able to do anything about that. Nice scouting though. Oh and a deny. At least that gives him an escape path here where he's not going to get spotted. It looks like we're going to try to go into a team engagement here. I hit him with my Q. I do have my ultimate up, but there weren't enough people around. Here, though! Bam! How did I not get that kill? Bounce back to him? Nope. Bounce back to all the minions? Sure. Oh, there we go. Finally landed back on him. Such a random ult. I mean, he's not quite as random as Blacksmith, and I have to escape from the minions here. But it, the ult is, can be very hit and miss. Generally speaking, it has more to do with the enemy's actions than anything else. But every now and again, if there's minions around, you get really unlucky. And I guess part of it is the skill of not using your ultimate where it could just bounce to a bunch of minions. Although, hey, if I'm having problems getting last hits, that'll be the cure for it. 189 GP. I'm getting up there a little bit. Of course, it's going to improve over time as your auto attack damage and various nuke spells improve and your ability to farm these guys improve. 9 to 14, still a pretty close game. I think at this point, especially with the tower deny, we probably have gone up ahead a little bit. There's probably a quick way to switch between all these views. I like leaving it to just our vision, but eh, you know what, maybe. Maybe we'll do this. Not quite as much drama, and then how do I... There we go, shrink that was down just a little bit. So now we can, we can see the enemy vision. We can also be pulled back just a little bit more. And my goal with these is not to give a commentary of the game, because the games are way too low level for them to be particularly interesting from that sort of strategic point of view. Uh, I'm mostly trying to talk about my thoughts so that the rare few people who are worse than me can maybe learn something. Although you're probably learning the wrong thing. You probably shouldn't be listening to me at all. Check the comments. There's certainly going to be people correcting me. Why were you not moving at all? That was strange. Oh, the co this always happens when I go into spectator view. The colors get inverted. Well, the Hellborn are always red. 
So I'm kind of backwards on the coloring, and that's one of the other problems of going to spectator mode. My friend in full recognition is all off. So yeah, uh, and then hopefully, the, the flip side is that hopefully the people who are better than me, which are many, will leave comments and explain things and give me some advice, or just advice that's going to be useful for other people. If you've got ideas for builds, general techniques, those would be very, very handy. So it looks like right now we're just mostly jockeying for position. You can see the sort of the flocking of the dots as we jockey, just, just to see who can get the best initiation here, especially now that I've got my ultimate off. I am itching for a fight. Whenever that ulti is off, I want us to engage somewhere. This tower is going to drop in seconds. It's going to be a little bit careful about the detection mode, but god, the scouting that we get from that. In fact, it's, it's worth going back to this mode just to see, like, what, what do we see? How much do we know? Well, right now they're all hiding, but we know that there's a bunch of them here because of Nighthound. And there, see all this vision, so incredibly valuable. Want to focus fire on Kinesis? Probably reasonable. We're just going to push this lane a little bit. Have our minions tank a little and also deny them vision further up the lane. There's the charge! Initiation, where am I? Late to the party, late to the party. Ulting in! Bounce, 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 bounce. It still bounces despite Kronos' ult. That's good to know. And I don't think I got any kills from there, but they went pretty, pretty low. Oh, and I died. Chased down by the Monkey King, which is fine. If you want to kill me after I ult, feel free to waste as many resources as on me as you want. Oh, I can't believe he walked away. Um, it, it doesn't seem like a good idea, actually. It, it definitely, it seems like a flaw. Um because my threat is greatly diminished. Especially if I've done this and I've queued. I mean, yeah, I can recast this every 9.25 seconds, but that's not that often. It doesn't do that much damage compared to someone who can actually auto-attack. It's not worth finishing me off. It's actually a silly thing. It all comes down to, have I dropped my alt? Yes, no? Okay, that then I'm either a threat or I'm not a threat. 